Welcome everybody to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. That's right, today I got another grip of stories coming your way. First one's going to blow your mind coming from Buffalo, New York. Happened back in 2012, but just got settled. And you ain't going to believe the settlement amount and why. Not to mention a few other sock shocking stories coming your way, so... If this is what you're into, all things lockup and crime related, then this is where you want to be. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave, and check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Now, like I said, first story is coming from Buffalo, New York, and this is the state report of an incident that happened in 2012. But something dramatic happened in this situation. We're going to speak about it at the end, but first let's speak about what exactly took place. The family of Richard Metcalf said that their son started acting strangely in November of 2012. He grew paranoid, thinking that someone or something was after him. At around 2 a.m. on November 27th, he suddenly ran out of the home he shared with his girlfriend. Snow covering the ground, he's only wearing a t-shirt and shorts. That alone right there should let you know that that person's going through some mental issues. DP police said that they caught up with Metcalf breaking into a catering business where he worked. He initially resisted and was tased twice. He eventually complied and was taken back to a holding cell in DPU and held for arraignment. After his arraignment, Metcalf was transported to Erie County Holding Center, pending a mental health evaluation ordered by the local judge. And just by him being sentenced to a psych evaluation, I mean, come on. That should let COs and police know that this guy's mind could possibly be anywhere, so anything can happen. That's the thing, though. A lot of these guys, man, they don't care if you got them or not. If you annoy them or, or say something wrong to them, they're going to put the pressure on you. And that's what they did to this guy. Now, after the judge sentenced him to the mental evaluation, he was about to be shipped back to the jail. Before he gets there, he ends up using the bathroom, soiling himself. And, of course, that's going to require the COs to throw him into the shower. They can't just put him back into the cell block like that. The state report shows that corrections officers told DPU detectives when they dropped Metcalf off, that he had freaked out after he was taken to the showers and they had to take him down in order to control him. Because of his injuries, Metcalf was then taken to ECMC, where medical staff observed cuts and bruises all over his face. Another doctor found Metcalf to have multiple skin abrasions and lesions to his hands and feet and new and worsening bruises on his face, arms, and legs. He was eventually taken back to the holding center where his behavior worsened, as did the beatings. Metcalf began hallucinating several hours after being brought back to the holding center. Officers reported to the state that he was acting irrational in his cell, that he was biting and punching himself, and scraping and stabbing himself with a utensil. He was also reportedly banging his head on some cell bars. The report states Metcalf told officers he was radioactive and repeatedly yelled the word slaughterhouse. Several inmate witnesses corroborated this report to the state investigators. After being restrained and shackled at the hands and ankles, a bleeding Metcalf began to spit at the officers. He was taken to the infirmary and continued to resist, despite the fact that at least four of them were holding him down. Officers placed a spit mask on Metcalf, and he eventually chewed through it, according to the report. Surveillance video then showed an officer leaving the room and returning with a pillowcase, which was then loosely tied around Metcalf's head. EMTs were eventually summoned, but upon arriving, they're prohibited from assessing Metcalf. Medical staff said deputies told them safety was an issue. At the time, Metcalf's head was covered, and he was being held down on his chest on a medical table. Metcalf was finally lifted into an ambulance and turned onto his back for the first time since being ripped from his cell. An EMT told state investigators he found the chewed through spit mask still tied around Metcalf's neck. It was so tight it required him to use scissors to remove it. Metcalf was no longer resisting, but he was no longer breathing, and his heart had stopped, according to the report. Now, the article I'm reading from now is from three days ago. A jury has awarded 95. Five million dollars to the father of a man who was beaten to death at the Erie County Holding Center in 2012. I don't know, I felt like this story really needed to be brought to y'all's attention because first and foremost, 12 years for this to finish. So anybody that's going through this process of trying to sue the prisons or anything because of something that happened to your family member, be ready for the long haul because a lot of them, like the one you've seen today, could take quite a while. Don't stop fighting. Keep pushing forward day by day, year by year, until justice is served. 
Now the next story is every parent's worst nightmare. It's almost something out of a movie, even down to the individual that got caught doing it. This is Craig Ross Jr. You can only imagine what he's in court for. Coming from New York once again, a man was sentenced Wednesday to 47 years to life in prison for kidnapping and sexually assaulting a nine-year-old girl who went missing from a state park in upstate New York last year. Craig Ross Jr. pleaded guilty in February to taking a girl September 30th from a campground at Maru State Park. The child had been riding on a bike path with friends at the campground near her home on a Saturday evening when she went to take one last lap. You know, that really makes me think of my kids because... My middle child, Alina, the other ones will come in or whatever. She'll be like last one in because she has to do one more lap. That's what happened to this family's little girl. But she was doing her last lap on that path on her own and didn't return. Man, I can't even imagine that, right? Especially if the bike was still there too. It says the disappearance sparked a two-day search involving more than 100 people before the girl was found alive in a cabinet at a camper Ross was staying in. He stuffed her in a cabinet in his camper. Look at this guy. Imagine him doing something like that to one of your children. And every time someone gets caught up for something like this, it makes me wonder immediately how many other possible times has he done it and not gotten caught. But you're not going to believe this, all right? The break in the case came when the law enforcement guarding the girl's home saw someone place a ransom note in its mailbox. Police eventually matched fingerprints on the note to Ross who was in the database because of a 1999 drunk driving case. And state police and FBI SWAT team then descended on the camper. Thank God for that, right? Ross, who had previously been scheduled to stay in trial this month, was sentenced to a minimum of 25 years to life in prison for kidnapping charge and 22 years to life for the sexual assault of a child with the sentences to be served consecutively. Man, oh man, I can only imagine what they got in store for that guy in New York if he steps into the wrong pod. I can't believe he went back to the house after he kidnapped the girl. Like, nobody's gonna be watching it. Be careful with your kids out there, man. Always keep a close eye on them, especially when you're, you know, dealing with parks, state parks, and stuff like that. And you ain't gotta be camping or nothing if you just live by them. Or somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, you know. Uh, you know, kids like to ride on them trails all through the woods, sometimes through the farms and stuff. Man, you got to keep a close eye on them nowadays. It ain't like when I was a kid. And you'll hear that for every generation. Now it's time to warm things up a bit, traveling down south to Houston. A 40-year-old Houston man was sentenced to 60 years in prison after pleading guilty to killing a man who had been trying to help him get back on his feet, as well as the man's young son. Fadero, a convicted felon who was essentially homeless at the time of the crimes, pleaded guilty to two counts of murder on the day before his trial. The victim, Michael, 38, spent months trying to help Fadero, including providing him with jobs so he can make money. They have been friends since high school. Michael, a husband and father of four, even let Fadero use his home address to get mail. On September 20, 2022, Fadero confronted Michael at a shopping center. Near the intersection of Chimney Rock and Southwest Freeway over a misunderstanding about a job, Darrow demanded money from his friend Michael at the strip center in the middle of the day. During the argument, Fedaro pulled out a gun and shot Michael. Fedaro then took Michael's SUV with his two-year-old son, Micah. Fedaro ditched the vehicle a few miles away. In surveillance video, he's seen parking the SUV, turning it off, locking it with the windows rolled up. When Houston police found the abandoned SUV hours later, the child was found dead inside the vehicle. The outside temperature reached the low of 90s that day. Fedaro was arrested the following day. 60 years to life. Yup, take a closer look at this guy, man. Killed his best friend and his son just because he didn't give him a few dollars. Maybe he was done helping that guy, man. You know, there's plenty of people that I've helped like that where I'm just about done, right? There's got to be a point in time where you got to realize that the people you're trying to help is just taking advantage of you now. And that might have been the situation. I don't know the details of the case, but my condolences go out to the victim's families, man. That, that's just unreal. Now, the next story is by far a sock shocker. But first, before we get into it, yes, if you notice that my beard is a little lower than the previous clips, because while the first half of the video was saving, I shaved my beard down because I'm going to get a haircut today, so... So I'm just trying to knock a few birds out with one stone. Anyways, let's get into it, man. This one, we're traveling down to sunny, warm Florida. Seems like a woman got sentenced to life, but she ain't gonna believe why. Got a video to go with this one as well. 
The article says a 23-year-old Fort Pierce woman was sentenced to life in prison on Wednesday for stabbing a St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office deputy two years ago. Leah Michelle Day was found guilty of attempted murder of a law enforcement officer by a jury six days earlier. Cody Calendula was injured by Ms. Day after the rollover crash on March 23, 2022. Cody, who missed two and a half months of work, was in the courtroom for the sentence. St. Lucie County Sheriff Keith Pearson said that one of his deputies was trying to help Ms. Day when she attacked him. Every incident that, we, that our deputies encounter is always a learning experience. You know, watching the body cam footage of this incident is just, it just hurts you inside. Our deputies responded to help somebody who was involved in a car crash. The last thing they ever thought that would happen is they would be the ones needing help. Colangelo, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, found Ms. Day walking along the shoreline after a rollover crash on Indian River Drive. Now, just like any other deputy, they see someone walking away from the scene, they're going to try to wrangle them up. And that's exactly what Deputy Colangelo did. What's going on? Man, stop real quick. Newly released body camera video reveals the first moment St. Lucie County Sheriff's Deputy Cody Colangelo. Were you just in a crash? Ma'am, come up here. Don't walk away. Came into contact with Leah Day down an embankment near the water after investigators say she crashed her car on South Indian River Drive late Wednesday night. Walk upstairs, all right? Let's get out this water area. As you can see here, Colangelo continues redirecting her up these stairs to get out of the watered area. When she's walking up, she abruptly turns around and stabs him in the neck. That's why I always tell people, man, you see a... Uh, drunk driving accident or something, people are leaving the crime scene, man, you gotta be careful going up to them individuals. If they recognize that they might have possibly killed someone or they're probably already on the run, who knows what they could do to you to get up out of the mix. The article continues saying, despite being stabbed and suffering a severe injury, Colangelo chased after Ms. Day while applying pressure to his wound. Damn. Them St. Lucie deputies are built a little different, aren't they? I get stabbed in the neck, man. I ain't running after nothing. Because in my head, I know the blood's going to start pumping even more. Catch you on a different day, ma'am. I'm putting pressure right here, keeping calm. But not that deputy. He said he's catching that jank today. Now at that point, Deputy Colangelo lost sight of day and began radioing other deputies for help. Authorities eventually found Ms. Day hiding in an embankment and took her into custody. Colangelo underwent a two-hour surgery during which doctors replaced part of the artery in his neck with one from his leg. Amazing how doctors can do things like that, right? I always wonder, like, how did things like that not start leaking or something? It ain't like a car you can just go up under the hood and patch it up again. Shout out to all the surgeons out there, that's for sure. But like I said, she was sentenced to life, you know? Order don't play, man. I'm gonna try to take a life of one of their officers, man. You're gonna be sitting in that tank for the rest of years. But that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you enjoyed today's grip of crime-related news coming from across the country. But stay tuned. I got another courtroom sentencing coming your way. It's a wild one, to say the least. So be on the lookout for that. But as always, until the next time, y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.